Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Education Minister expresses disgust over behavior of Manning Cup champions during victory celebrations. Jamaica to declare position on global stock take document from COP28 soon. And later in sports, winners take the lead in T20 series against England. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. Education Minister Favel Williams has condemned the rowdy behavior of Mona High students during their celebrations on Monday. Mrs. Williams is also appealing to organizers of Wednesday's event at the National Stadium, which also involves Mona High to ensure adequate security is in place. More in this report. On Monday, a group of students from Mona High School stormed the grounds of Jamaica College. This while celebrating their school's victory in the Manning Cup School Board Football Finals last Friday. Speaking at Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing, Education Minister Favel Williams says this type of behavior will not be tolerated. I lay the responsibility squarely at the feet of the leadership of Mona High School to hold those students who were involved in this most crass behavior to account. And indeed, in the principal's response to us, it was indicated that such actions would be taken to investigate and discipline the students swiftly. Mrs. Williams says with another match set to take place at the National Stadium at 5 p.m. today with Mona High and Clarendon College, she's concerned about how the event will end. So we already know the history of these two schools and we know that spirits are going to be high, very high among spectators on both sides. And so I'm adamant that we do not want to see a repeat of what happened last Friday night when spectators stormed the field and brought about a premature end to the celebrations. The Education Minister is calling on students, spectators, as well as the organizers to ensure that there are no security breaches. So we want to fly the Jamaican flag high and display the best sportsmanship that we can. Um, again, we do not want the event to end prematurely due to any unruly behavior. And so in that vein, I call on ISA, the sponsors, and all involved in executing this event, this upcoming event, to ensure that there are no breakdowns in the security arrangements. We want everyone to have a safe and immensely enjoyable game. And still at post cabinet, as it relates to discussions on the global stock take document from COP28, and Jamaica's position on the final document, Information Minister Robert Morgan says that will be addressed soon. There was a wave of protest on Monday after the release of the document, as there was no commitment to phase out fossil fuel use by 2050. The Caribbean bloc described the document as a death certificate for the region. Minister Samuda will be making a ministerial statement where we will give an update as to Jamaica's statement at COP, as well as the, um, the final document coming out of COP. He will also be speaking on several other environmental issues um, that have been in the media as of recent dates. So you can look forward to that this week, I suspect, in the Senate. The National, National Road Safety Council, NRSC, is again appealing to motorists as the number of road fatalities continue to rise. After several fatal crashes in St. James, they have issued a reminder for caution, especially heading into the Christmas season. Two fatalities along the Rose Hall Main Road in St. James Tuesday morning have increased the number of road fatalities since January to 400. This is 61 fewer than the total number of deaths for 2022. But there is now grave concern about drivers traversing the Rose Hall Main Road in St. James. By our count, Six people, including two children, have died there in motor vehicle crashes recently. On Tuesday, two persons, including a U.S. national from Minnesota, died after the driver of a black Voxy motor car tried to overtake another vehicle. 
but collided with a truck heading in the opposite direction. Two days earlier on Sunday, two children, Roshane Riney and Denmark Go, 5 and 11 years, died in a crash in the same area. Another family member, 20-year-old Brittany Hilton, also died in that crash, leaving the family devastated. I'm yeah, looking at the back. I'm not even know beside the car, I'm going to crawl through the window, come out. I'm going to come out. They take out the first one, I come out with my grandson. Look like him dead already. What was his name? That is Denmark Go. Yeah. Denmark Go first, Missy come out. And then this next person, Missy come, Brittany Hilton. We don't have the strength to deal with this. No, right now. Three, one time. Mm -mm. It hurt. It hurt me, shattered. Let me tell you, I know what it's like to have a broken heart at this. Give me that the experience. I know what it's like to feel real pain. I love my niece and I never know. Last week, Thursday, a man died in a crash at the same spot. For Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council, Dr. Lucian Jones, the situation is past serious. This is time for grief and mourning and serious introspection about what is happening on the nation's roads. So as we approach Christmas, and on ready, we had 41 persons dying in November and 16 so far for December. This is not looking good. He believes deaths are avoidable if motorists obey the rules of the road, including the use of safety devices. Of note, Miss Stevenson was in the fatal crash with her grandchildren. Me, me all right, you know. Yeah, I mean, cross me here, so. But me most likely me feel sad, um, seat belt. Me they try to loose, you know, stiffen up around me waist. So me most likely me feel sad, seat belt. Yeah. I mean, I really get no other damage. We need to remind people constantly, when you go in a car, buckle up, front and back. It will save your life. When you are riding a motorcycle, wear a helmet. It will save your life. As a pedestrian, wear light color clothes at night. Do not wear dark color clothes. It might save your life. He is also reminding persons to have a designated driver who will not be drinking when attending parties during the festive season. Herman Green, TVJ News. An appeal this afternoon for more police personnel to be sent to the parish of St. James as crime continues to spiral out of control. Now data from the Jamaica Constabulary Force shows that up to December 2, there were 172 murders in the parish. But despite the imposition of three states of emergency in the space of one month, criminals continue to wreak havoc in the Western Parish. It's why the leadership of the business community in the parish is calling for more boots on the ground. We are really concerned about what is happening as it relates to criminal activity. And we look at the retail trade and, and oop, it, 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 it does not suffer during this period. We are also calling on the businesses to be aware of your surroundings. You, you, we have to do our own um, security. Um, um, look at what is happening around us, ensure we are aware and protect our businesses, protect our workers, protect our, our people. In the meantime, President of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce, Oral Heaven, says the business community in St. James stands ready to patch their cameras into the government's Jamaica Eye program. Now, this, he says, will better aid in capturing criminals. As to when that will take place, Mr. Heaven says discussions are ongoing. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Venetia Phillips has officially crossed over and joined the Jamaica Labour Party JLP in the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. Kingston's Mayor Delroy Williams made a jeering announcement Tuesday morning. As Chairman of Council, welcome Councillor Venetia Phillips to the majority side in Council. Phillips has served two terms as councillor. She was defeated in the last general elections when she challenged Favel Williams for the St. Andrew Eastern seat. And it's now time for the Business Minute. The Bank of Jamaica has given an update on the progress to implement the Twin Peaks model announced earlier this year. 
The supervisory model for the financial sector is to be implemented by the end of the 2024-25 fiscal year. Senior Deputy Governor of the BOJ, Dr. Wayne Robinson, says the structure of the new model and how it will be funded is being contemplated. Both regulatory arms, both peaks, um, the Bank of Jamaica and uh, the new FSC, the objective is to ensure that they are very much independent and have the capacity to execute on, on their mandates. So as you can imagine that this is going to involve a raft of legislative changes um, which we, we are working on. Under the regime, the Financial Services Commission, FSC, will be responsible for consumer protection and market conduct oversight, while the BOJ will manage matters of financial stability and prudential affairs. Further afield, TikTok has hit a $10 billion user spending on milestone. The video sharing platform became the first app that isn't a mobile game to generate $10 billion in global consumer spending. It's expected to become the highest earning app ever. The spending comes from TikTok's in-app purchases of coins, which can be used to buy gifts for influencers on the platform. The gifts reward creators for their content and can be cashed out, with TikTok retaining 50% of the payout. And that's it for the Business Minute. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at arthritis. Another subset of patients who are younger would be like your rheumatoid arthritis patient, which is an inflammatory arthritis. And those people tend to get a rapid degeneration of their joints as well. These people also need relatively early treatment. So the older generation, 50s, sorry, 60s, 70s, 80s, that gradual wear and tear of the cartilage causes the pain in the, in the joint. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And now for today's health living tip. Manage your weight. Get enough exercise. Use hot and cold therapy. Use medication to cope with pain. And get a massage. Now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the five Guyana Defense Force soldiers who perished when their helicopter crashed last week died from multiple injuries and severe burns. That's according to the results of the autopsies done Monday. However, investigations are ongoing into the cause of the crash. Only two servicemen survived the December 6 crash in the Essequibo region. On the international scene, dozens of people have been injured in a wave of missile strikes on the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, overnight. 53 people were hurt in the attacks, including six children. The strikes happened after President Volodymyr Zelensky left the U.S. House Republicans are expected to vote today on their resolution to formalize an impeachment inquiry into U.S. President Joe Biden. House Republicans have not had enough votes to legitimize their ongoing inquiry with a full chamber vote. The probe has so far struggled to uncover wrongdoing by the president. Since winning the majority, House Republicans have been investigating aspects of Mr. Biden's family and administration, hunting for evidence that could be used to prove he's corrupt and should be impeached. And that's it for the top regional and international stories. Thanks, Romardo. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report. Spencer Darlington is standing by.